Hi, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to talk about the TI-89 calculator and we're going to begin the first of several sections we're going to talk about the graphing capabilities of uh, this calculator. So it's a graphing calculator. You bought it to graph uh, equations along with all the other things it can do. So let's start to talk about graphing. It's actually pretty powerful and it's actually pretty fast compared to other calculators. The calculator can graph uh, pretty much any function you give it uh, here it lets you zoom in and zoom out and trace the graphs and it'll let you graph more than one function at once which is great for finding out where functions intersect uh, or you know otherwise cross and everything else so it's pretty neat um, what I need to do first is uh, just jump right in I guess and just show you a few things let's look over here at the top of the F buttons here. So you know already that these F buttons correspond to these menus. F1 goes for tools, F2 goes for algebra, uh, etc. But above the F functions you have these these uh, labels in sort of green right here. And these are all going to in one manner or another affect the graphing. So basically just as, as sort of a 100,000 foot overview you input your functions to graph or your equations to graph uh, in the y equals area because you're setting up y equals something uh, so I may use the term equation and function interchangeably they're really the same thing uh, whenever we want to look at the graph we go over and look at the graph area so we have to hit green function and then that and then to change the um, the scale of the axes and things like that we go into the window menu these other guys over here they're going to be used for something late, later on so don't worry about that so so we're really going to be dancing between these three areas all the time so let's go hit green and then F1 here which is the Y equals area and then we will see that right now this uh, this guy has a bunch of empty slots here Y1, Y2, Y3 so what you can do is put different equations, different functions, whatever word you want to use you can put them in here and the calculator will actually graph I think up to 99 functions it can hold like 99 of these guys in here now it would be very very slow to graph all of those guys at once but it can actually do it so you're not going to run out of room there uh, before we go any farther I just want to also point out one of the the guys down here on the status line says function funk that means we're in function mode um, let me go ahead and exit out of here really quickly and go into the mode menu and tell you right now the very first thing says that the graph we're in function mode that means we're graphing uh, functions if we fly this out there's different options parametric polar sequences three-dimensional functions and differential equations so those are more advanced things we'll get to later right now we're fun we're graphing regular old functions so we're gonna stick it right there and you can see that uh, represented uh, right on the status line so I just wanted to point that out to you because when we get into um, when we get into learning how to plot different kinds of functions later on you might end up in one mode and then be surprised that this looks a little bit different in here so you need to know how to switch back and forth out of function mode alright now the first thing we want to do is input a simple function in here so the easiest thing I can think of is to put x squared so x raised to the power of 2 now notice that once I started typing it was highlighted here I'm typing in the into the y1 area so function number one x squared so I hit enter and it's gonna put it up there the check mark is there telling me that that function is going to be plotted and I'm plotting x squared okay so very simply you can go and do that if you want to delete that guys highlight it hit clear it'll disappear uh, so let's go ahead and put it back and let's go ahead and graph it so all you gotta do is put it in there and now we want to go look at the graph of it so just hit the green button here and go look at the graph window when you do that it's going to automatically graph what you have input all of the functions that are selected to be graphed are going to be graphed at this time it's going to actually calculate them and put them here now the default scale we'll talk about how to set that here in a second but it's automatically defaulted to plus 10 minus 10 on the x-axis plus 10 minus 10 on the y-axis and that's all able to be changed alright so that's basically it I mean now you know how to go and graph a function now you can go in back into the y equals and in, let's say in, uh, in addition to x squared let's go ahead and graph something else so you just type in another function x plus uh, 3 let's say hit enter now y2 has another function x plus, th uh, x plus 3 and one, one thing I want to say before I forget here 
is that when you're typing in these functions, the only independent variable that you can choose over here has got to be this X button over here. It's just a default thing that the calculator is going to expect. So always make sure and use this X button when you're typing in your functions. So again, in order to plot it, you just have to input it and go back to the graph window, and it's automatically going to plot it. So you don't have to actually hit uh, execute or plot execute or anything like that. You just go in there, type them in, go back to the graph window, so you can flip back and forth over here. Now notice that once we go in here, if we don't make any changes, if we go back to the graph window, it doesn't redraw the plots because we haven't made any changes. But as soon as I make a change, let's do x minus 1 for my third one here. As soon as I make a change and I go back, it's going to go ahead and plot that third uh, function there and, and go ahead and draw it. So whenever it detects that you haven't actually made any changes, uh, it's not going to really redraw anything because all the data is really the same. So that's a pretty good time saving feature. Let me go back in here and just illustrate one thing really quickly. You can clear each one of these guys individually by hitting the clear button. It'll erase them. So an example of that would be to clear that guy out, right? So it's very easy. But what if you have 25 functions here or 15 functions here and you want to clear them? Go up to the Tools menu, F1, uh, and way down here it says Clear Functions. Clear Functions. So hit enter it's going to give you a warning or you want to clear all these guys enter equals yes and all 99 functions will be cleared so let me go ahead and put in x plus 4 and go ahead and put back in x uh, squared whoops let's do x squared minus 1 okay just to make them a little bit different and let's go ahead and graph these and I'll show you a few more things so notice each graph is drawn in succession it draws one graph finishes that guy and then we start to draw the next graph so every graph that you put is going to be top to bottom in order okay so you can get the idea of the shape of a guy now what if you want to zoom in a little bit there are a million ways to zoom in to this guy but I'm, I'm not I'm gonna have an entire lesson on zooming really so I'm just gonna give you a little taste of it so you can kinda of get going first thing you want to notice is the window menu here if you go up to the window menu this is the current set up for the X and Y axis of this graph and this is the default it's plus 10 minus 10 on X and Y just like I told you so really a quick way to zoom in is just to type in different numbers here so you can make it negative 5 uh, to 5 let's say so this is the X range and here's the Y range X scale is uh, where the tick marks are on the axis the tick marks are every you know every unit along X and Y. You generally aren't going to change these too much. You might, you'll be changing X and Y though occasionally. So we go ahead and change it. We don't have to hit enter or anything save or anything like that. We go back to the graph menu and it's going to redraw the plots in succession. And notice how it looks different now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We change the X scale. The graph looks stretched horizontally because of that. We did not change the Y scale. That stays the same. So we've effectively zoomed in a little bit. All right, which is, which is really, um, you know, obviously really good. So we go up in here and you can change uh, this guy here. Now, one more thing I want to point out to you is the tools menu. Uh, let me go into F1. We have save as, paste, delete, clear functions. We talked about it. If you go past number eight, you get to the format menu. This is something you're not going to use that much, but I wanted to, to cover it with you. The first one says coordinates. Right now it's rectangular. What this means is, let me go ahead and go back to the graph. Right now I'm looking at a graph. If I just start hitting the arrow keys, I'm going to have a little cursor indicate pop up here it's not going to be attached to my graph I can move it anywhere I want and the coordinates of this guy is going to always be displayed in X comma Y that's rectangular coordinates alright so I can go up here to F1 I'll go down to the format menu if I changed it to polar or if I turned it off it wouldn't display any coordinates there if I changed it to polar it would display the coordinates in um, you know in magnitude and an angle so if I just started doing this see here's a magnitude and an angle not something you're gonna to typically do too often you should probably leave it in uh, rectangular unless you're really doing a polar plot 
The next guy is the grid. Right now it's off. You want to leave it off because if you turn it on, look what your graph looks like. Let's go ahead and save that. Notice it puts little grid lines everywhere. Everywhere where there's an intersection between a tick mark on the x-axis and a tick mark on the y-axis, it puts a dot. That might have some use in certain cases, but really it clutters up the screen. So I recommend to you to leave it off, which is how it comes. So we'll turn the grid off. The next guy is axis. This is to display the x and y axis. Always leave it on, I mean, unless you have a really good reason. Uh, leading cursor, uh, leave, leave it off. Uh, but what it really does is it, it's kind of silly. If you turn it on, then as the graph is drawn, there's a little cursor that is displayed in front of it. And if I do it now, it's just going to take a long time to complete. It's not something that you really want to change too much. Literally, all that happens is a little blinking cursor pops up uh, as your graph is drawn. It doesn't add any additional information or anything, uh, really. Unless you're graphing 25 plots at once, it might be useful to know which one is being graphed. But you can play with it on your calculator. It doesn't really add much. Labels, this is what labels the X and Y axis. Uh, you can turn it on if you want, but it gets in the way because... Uh, Let's go ahead and let it finish here. Uh, the X and Y labels are really placed in a, in a not really a, a really convenient location. So it's not something that's really uh, typically useful. See, X is down here and Y is over here. I mean, really, they, they try to keep it away from the axes here so that it doesn't clutter it up. But it, it just really doesn't help very much. So really, just leave it off is my, my advice to you there. So leave labels off, which is the default. Uh, there. So we've got a pretty good idea of what's in the tools menu. So as you're looking at your graph, you have all these menus up here. You have the tools menu, we have the formatting options, you have the zoom menu. I'm going to talk about all of these in great detail in another lesson, an entire lesson. You have the trace menu, we'll talk about that in a minute. You can redraw your graph by, by hitting F4 and it'll just redraw it again for whatever reason if you decide that you need to redraw the thing on the fly, you can do that. F5 uh, is going to be the math menu and this is just some stuff you can do calculations you can do right on on the graph we'll talk about later draw menu is how you you can literally draw shapes circles and things like that on the menu if uh, on the graph if, if you have a need for that uh, and some similar things here we'll talk about later some more advanced functions what I want to do for the rest of the lesson here is I want to give you two quick nuggets of tools that you can use um, really really quickly right out of the gate I'm gonna give you a dedicated lesson on zooming later but I wanted to show you in the F2 menu zoom box one of the most useful things the entire calculator has let's say you wanna look at this region over here of the graph you wanna zoom in real tight over there so just put the cursor over there after you select zoom box hit enter that locks down one corner of the box and then you just literally draw a box that's all you have to do to include that intersection point and then hit enter and then when you do that, the graph is going to zoom into that point, lock into it really tightly so that you can see it really up close and personal. And you can, you can zoom in to any, any length, any, any amount of times you want. I could do zoom box again and zoom in even tighter and tighter and tighter to get as close as I wanted to this intersection point if I wanted to. Um, that's really, really useful. Another thing I want to show you is the trace. Hit F3 and what's going to happen is a cursor is going to pop up at this time it's going to be locked onto one of your graphs. So if I go left and right I will see that this cursor stays on the graph. So I'm reading off values of X and Y right off of this equation and if I want to know a rough estimate of this intersection point I can put the cursor on top of it and say it's roughly right around there negative 1.79 positive 2.2 there are more exact ways to figure this intersection point out we'll talk about later but the trace function is really useful if you just want a quick and dirty way of, of examining points on the graph so all you have to do is hit F3 for that and you can hit escape to pop you out of that mode so again zoom box will zoom you in tighter now if, what if you zoom in really really tight and you just want to go back to to the normal zoom value you can go back to the window and you can uh, notice that when we zoomed in it automatically changed all of the X and Y scales because it zoomed in for us. Um, you could have achieved the same thing by typing this stuff in, but doing it graphically with zoom box is really easy. Now, if you want to zoom back out to the normal value, you could type in negative 10, positive 10 everywhere, but there's an easier way. In the uh, zoom menu here, 
zoom box is one of the most useful things that you have and I showed you how to do that if you go now to number six zoom standard that's really useful too because zoom standard let's hit number six will pop you back out to the normal default zoom of plus 10 minus 10 so if you use zoom box or some other zoom to zoom in really really tight trace around take a look at the function you're done with it you want to pop yourself back out just go to zoom uh, standard number six it's really really cool and really really fast uh, okay I think that's about all I want to say in this section I mean really the main thing to know in this calculator is to input your functions you input them in order down here they're going to be graphed in order you can put up to 99 functions in here although the calculator will take a long time to graph them all so I wouldn't recommend it but it can do it um, you can change the X and Y scales under the window menu manually uh, you graph the functions by going over to the graph guy here and it's automatically going to graph them all. Now if you want to start zooming into one part or another just go to the zoom menu. Zoom box is a really easy way to do that. When you do it you just lock one corner down, drag it to the other corner and it locks you in. If you want to zoom back out you go up to number six it pops you back out. Uh, and these are just probably some of the most useful functions, useful features that you'll find in your calculator. Now in a future section we're going to go over all of these zooming methods in detail. We'll go into all of these other things down here that we can do. There's a ton of things you can do with graphing, but by and large mostly what you're going to be doing, especially in an algebra class, is graphing functions, finding intersections, and generally seeing how things look, and tracing them also. What if you wanted to find the, uh, the uh, minimum value here? Uh, well you could go over to F3 for trace uh, here and notice that we're up on this upper graph here it's locked into that one but if we hit the down arrow it'll pop and it'll tell us we're on graph number two so that's a useful feature too if you go up it'll pop you back to graph number one so you can cycle through the graphs that you're tracing by going up and down and we can tell by and large that we're pretty close to to this intersect to this point here being the minimum there are if you zoom in you could get more and more accurate and there are more accurate ways to do that but the tracing function is really useful for getting a sort of a quick and dirty estimate of things like that so go play with it get your calculator out graph a few functions trace them zoom in zoom out uh, and just know that we're going to cover all this in even more detail uh, here in subsequent sections